Hello, friends, and welcome back to another edition of the Legal Toolkit Podcast, the award-winning Legal Toolkit Podcast, only on the Legal Talk Network. Twice a month, we're delivering law practice management tips and tricks directly to your ear holes. My name, which hasn't changed, is Jared Korea. And because Peter Tamarkin was unavailable, I'm your show host today. I'm the CEO of Red Cave Law Firm Consulting, a business management consulting service for attorneys. Find us online at www.redcavelegal.com. I'm the COO of Guinean Software, Inc. We build chatbots so law firms can convert more leads. You can find out more about Gideon at www.gideon.legal. Before we get rolling, I'd like to take a moment, as I always do, to thank my mom for listening to every episode. Thanks, Mom. I'd also like to thank our sponsors. They're the reasons you're listening to this show right now. We would like to thank Alert Communications for sponsoring this podcast. If any law firm is looking for call, intake, or retainer services available 24-7, 365, just call 866-827-5568. Scorpion is the leading provider of marketing solutions for the legal industry. With nearly 20 years of experience serving attorneys, Scorpion can help grow your practice. Learn more at scorpionlegal.com. TimeSolve is the number one web-based time and billing software for lawyers. Providing solutions since 1999, TimeSolve provides the most comprehensive billing features for law firms big and small. www.timesolve.com. Now you're probably thinking, Jared, you're the host of a highly successful podcast super important lawyer, or so my children seem to think. And you do all that, and you still sound so damn good on the show. How do you do it? It's a great question. And the fact of the matter is I have very little to do with any of what you hear. I'm merely the ear candy. Credit to the sound on this show goes to our tremendous producing and engineering team. Evan DeSherry, who's the show producer, Adam Lockwood is a sound engineer. And this goes back to the leadership team at Legal Talk Network. Lawrence Coletti, Adam Camrus, Trent Carlisle, folks I've worked with for years. They do a great job making me sound good. I actually sound terrible in real life. But I know what you're thinking. What if I wanted to create some audio for the web? What if I wanted to have my own podcast? What if I wanted to do videos that sounded crystal clear? I, I can't afford such a high-quality crack team, and it's probably true. But you can still sound great. Now, if you look at the way modern businesses, and by modern, I mean in the last like nine months or so, are conducting themselves, everything's done online. You have Zoom fatigue yet? I had Zoom fatigue in 2012. So it's more important than ever, since everybody's on video conferencing meetings these days, to sound really great. If you think about what you would do when you were marketing in person, like you did previously for your law firm, generating those referrals, before you went to a cocktail party, you'd dress up, take a shower, comb your hair, pack some business cards, things I haven't done in nine months. Well, as regularly, I have showered in the past nine months. So why don't you take the same care to impress those you meet online? So let's talk about some things that you can do to improve your audio for video conferences. And then maybe I'll dabble in a little bit of uh, sight as well. How can you improve what people see on those video conferences? So if you're on these calls all day, one easy fix you could make is to get a good microphone. I'm speaking to you right now on a Shure microphone. That's S-H-U-R-E. I also like this company called Blue makes a microphone called a Snowball. That's a good one too. And if you're doing videos, you might want to get like a little lapel mic that attaches to your shirt so it can be closer to your mouth and so that you can gesticulate a little bit more. You got a big standalone microphone like I have. I can't move around too much, right? But that's going to improve your sound quality tremendously on any conference call you have. And if your sound quality improves, you look more impressive to people. They can actually hear what you say. It's a good deal. And if you get a good mic, some noise canceling comes into play there as well. It's going to eliminate some of that background noise that's probably going on in your house right now. It's a pandemic. Kids are crawling around everywhere. A lot of noise, right? Another thing you can do to add to your own personal comfort is noise-canceling headphones. 
and headphones are pretty cheap, right? So if you're geared up for your conference call, you've got your mic, you've got your noise canceling headphones. I like Sony. You're in your own little world. Add to that an app like Crisp, K-R-I-S-P, that cancels background noise, both on your side and on the other party's side. So this is a great little application and it's really cheap. It's going to block out that background noise that you get on your communication apps. So if my kids are being wild in the background, not that my kids would ever do that, or if somebody's dog is barking on the other side of the conference call, I don't have to hear it. Now, that's just audio production, right? And everything I talked about here is going to cost you short, short money. It's going to be a blip on the radar. And in a year where people are traveling less than they ever have before, it'll help to get some of those business expenses in play, right? 2021, I got news for you. You're not going to be traveling much just like you were in 2020. 2022, well, hopefully the lid is off at that point. If you're recording audio, that's a different thing. Let's say you want to launch a podcast like this one. And why wouldn't you? Everybody's got a podcast now, right? You could use something like Zencaster without the ER at the end, just the R for recording audio. Audacity is another great free tool for recording audio and editing audio tracks as well. But it's not just for straight audio recording, right? You've got some stuff that you can use for video recording as well. So if you've got a Zoom account, you've got good sound, you've got the background noise limited, you've got your headphones on, you can record that and that's a really tight presentation. So in terms of the Zoom meetings that you're looking at, right? Like in addition to ramping up your audio components, why not also rack up an online background, right? You're working in the kitchen, maybe you're working in the basement. Get a professional background done. Make it branded so that you're selling yourself every time somebody's looking at you on a video conference. And how often are people looking at you on a video conference right now? When I do video conferences, I get a little picture of uh, Rick Patino behind me, which is mostly for the irony because Rick Pitino is horrible on many levels. Destroyed the Celtics in the mid-90s. Not a Rick Pitino fan. But if you're into non-ironic background applications, you can find those as well. So if there was ever a time to splurge on some audio, some video features that are going to make you look better online, and you're doing meetings all day, and you're now networking online, it's worth the effort and time to do that. Now, how does that sound? Imagine billing day being the happiest day of the month instead of the day you dread. Nobody went to law school because they love drafting invoices for clients. At TimeSolve, our attorneys save on average over eight hours a month in billing work. That means more billable time and turning billing day into happy day. Learn more about how to get to your time and billing happy place at timesolve.com. That's www.timesolv, leave off the e, dot com. Remember, that's T-I-M-E-S-O-L-V dot com. As the largest legal-only call center in the U.S., Alert Communications helps law firms and legal marketing agencies with new client intake. Alert captures and responds to all leads 24-7, 365 as an extension of your firm in both Spanish and English. Alert uses proven intake methods, customizing responses as needed, which earns the trust of clients and improves client retention. To find out how Alert can help your law office, call 866-827-5568 or visit alertcommunications.com slash LTN. Okay, it's about time to get to the cheese and bacon in the middle of this KFC Double Down Sanders trademark circle R. Let's interview our guest. My guest today, the one and only Sarah Schaff, who is the general manager of the payments division at Paradigm. What's Paradigm, you may ask? You may be saying to yourself, Sarah Schaff is the CEO of Headnote. Sarah, what happened? Hey, Jared. Great to get to be here again. Um, yes. All good questions, as usual. So Paradigm is the entity formerly known as ASG Legal Tech, mm -hmm. which is in our opinion, the leading company in the legal tech space that offers different platforms that are designed to meet the unique needs of every unique law firm, because we realize that no two firms are created the same. Correct. And that's, that's, <laughs> and that's exactly correct. Um, <laughs> you are also correct. I am the former CEO of Headnote and one of the co-founders. Headnote was acquired by Paradigm earlier, well, not this year, Late last year, right? So now we're right. in twenty twenty one, which is great, right? right? 
kind of think. gray. Kind of, okay. I guess. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> had a remains, couple blips. <laughs> remains to be seen. Yeah, jury's still out. <laughs> so Headnote was acquired. That's you're, right. You're running payments essentially at Paradigm, and Paradigm was um, so formerly ASG. That that was a rebrand they recently did. If I'm correct, right? That's right. Yeah, we yeah. recently rebranded as Paradigm. So Paradigm is really the the umbrella under which Practice Panther, Bill for Time, Maris Case, and Headnote all exist. We serve over 40,000 attorneys. We have a team of over 100 employees, and we have a united leadership team. That's a really big differentiator is that unlike any other company in the legal industry, we have the same leadership team that works across all the platforms of which I'm happy and honored to serve on. Uh, Mm -hmm. And we can use all of the learnings and the knowledge we get from things that we do in different platforms and leverage that to make those improvements across our platforms and bring more value to more lawyers faster. I like how you use learnings there. It's kind of old school. I, I like you. how you drop that in. So yeah, I mean, that may sound like an advertisement, but in all honesty, like there's been a lot of transactions taking place in legal tech lately. It's hard to keep up with all this. So I think when people are listening, like it's good to get centered. I've, I've never seen as many acquisitions yes. as there have occurred recently. The pandemic yeah. money is out there and it's real. It's been, uh, I mean, you nailed it. And I, I listened recently to your podcast with Bob Ambrosi, yeah. who I know is a good friend of both of ours, and yes. um, loved your conversation about that and his thoughts too. I mean, yeah. yeah, there's just a lot of activity. It's been really interesting to watch. I think, especially mm-hmm. in the the second half of last year, we saw a lot. The second half of the previous year, which you and I were together at ILTA right around the time that like the Clio investment was coming in and yes. there were rumors about some other, you know, conferences. companies. What's yeah, remember like conferences? Going to conferences? I know, yes. I know. Yes. So it's it's been a really active year for mm-hmm. the industry and the sector in general, really active year and a half. Oh yeah. Most active ever by like a wide margin. Fascinating. Fascinating. And and I have tons of thoughts about why that's happening, but but yeah, it's it's it's, it's hard to deny at this point. Well I want to talk to you about a very specific notion related to this, right? So like I don't know who first coined this phrase. I've heard like Jack Newton say it before, like operating system for legal, right? So there's mm-hmm. this whole there's this whole idea out there is like what do lawyers want? Is it mm-hmm. better to have like a baseline tool, like a software company that's just gonna integrate with everything? Kind of mm-hmm. like a Salesforce model, which mm-hmm. is kind of what Clio has done. Mm-hmm. Or is it better to have like a suite of products that work together? which is going to be the operating system for like everything you need in mm-hmm. your law firm. I, mm-hmm. I think you come down on one side of that argument and I'm interested to know like why you feel that way. Yeah, that's such, I mean, again, a great question. So I think the kind of Salesforce model, um, I kind of think of it as like that wheel and spoke, right? So yeah. you have the spoke, that's the kind of operating system that you can then choose as the user, all of the different integration paths you want. So you can, you know, choose your own adventure, customize it. And that sounds really great. And that was a really big trend the past couple of years in in technology in general and SaaS, but especially in legal. And frankly, I think what we're finding is that at least from the user's perspective, as somebody who's a lawyer myself and has used these platforms, it can get very confusing. You basically are customizing a system to a point where like only you know how to really (laughs) work it. And so if you are in a position where all of a sudden one of your integrations don't work or there's something going on with one of those integration partners, you can't go to your home, your operating system support team. You can't actually get the answers you need. You're now like, you're using multiple teams, you're paying multiple SaaS fees potentially to those different integrations, you have data in different places. And so, and frankly, you're depending right. on your operating system continuing to invest in that integration, right? Like they're gonna continue to maintain it. They're gonna have a relationship. Like they cut that integration off and suddenly your systems don't talk anymore. So I think it's a little bit for me confusing and a little overwhelming just the, the amount of choices and how to manage it once you figure out how to put it together. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people have felt like that. And so the trend we're seeing now is kind of a move in the other direction, which is like, can I actually have things exist under one roof? I can get more value out of data if it's actually shared and accessible to me in one place. I can cut the amount of time and headache I have to deal with if I can right. go to one team. And right. so the paradigm model is not so much like, hey, you should use pieces of all of these platforms as a law firm. It's like, you're a law firm, you're unique, you do not have the needs 
of a law firm that's next door. We want to offer you an operating system that fits your unique needs. We have three of those, depending on if you're cloud-based, you know, a mid-sized firm, if you're mm-hmm. more of an enterprise level firm and you really need time tracking and accounting, like that's a great bill for time use case. Practice Panther is, you know, the go-to cloud-based practice management solution. Mm-hmm. Maris case is especially good for workers comp attorneys and certain kinds of specialty areas yep. um, that really understand that. And then all of those are either currently or will have in-house all-in-one payments powered by Headnote. So your data is all going to live within that system. And that gives us the ability to give you really cool insights about your firm. And right. that's really the the idea is like, we want to give you a unique solution for your firm, but we don't want to make you go to multiple teams and have to like deal with how to make it all work together. Right. That makes sense. I got analogies for days. So like mm-hmm. what, ma- what this makes me think of is like, right, you put together a nice puzzle and then mm-hmm. you can't find the one piece. We're always using like a single <laughs> puzzle piece at my house. And it's like the puzzle just doesn't look the same. Like where's no. the tiger's nose? There's then, no um, satisfaction, you know? Right, right. And it, it's also kind of like, you know, when people buy like multifunction machines, right? And the idea is like you've got scanner, printer, fax, right? Because oh God, yes. still, And then like, that machine breaks and like, you don't just lose like your scanner, you lose right. everything. So I, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying here, but like one of the things that's interesting is that you brought up a couple different points that I think are relevant. Well, more than two, but I'm going to focus on two. Like one is this notion of like how overwhelming it is. Yeah. I, I get so many attorneys who talk to me and they're like, I had to call you because I don't know what software to choose because it appears as if I have 800 choices. Right. So it seems to me that for some attorneys, there would be comfort in going to one provider and saying, I need these five components. Can you right. put that together for me? Right. So that sounds like an advantage for you. And, and have you seen that be the case with respect to the attorneys you're talking to now in your new position? D- definitely. I mean, okay. I think what you're talking about is happens to me all the time. Analysis yeah. paralysis. Like I yeah, that's perfect way constantly to as, and you know, I live in the Bay area and am a, a very proud technologist. I like to be an early adopter of technology and, mm-hmm. you know, very active out here in the entrepreneurial community. So I love product and everything related to it. I get so overwhelmed, not even legal tech related, just when you're trying to choose like anything to use in your yeah. daily life these days, there's so many options and they can, they can <laughs> talk to this, they can talk to that. And I'm like, I just, I have a tendency to kind of to zone out and kind of right. go back to the old way of like, can I have three choices? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I just choose from those. That sounds more comforting. And I think that's what we're all dealing with. I mean, frankly, let's, let's look at the obvious over the past year. Like we're overwhelmed. Like it's overwhelming times between the amount of things that we're taking in on the news and the pandemic and like, well, it is right. sensory overload. Let's limit the opportunities to feel overwhelmed. Yeah, no, t- I can't say I've enjoyed the past right. year in terms of that. <laughs> but the other thing you brought up was like this data yeah. proposition. Yeah. So I'm like a big advocate of like data analytics and law firms. Yes. Law, law firms have all this data at their disposal and they right. don't use it. So like nope. aggregating data, maybe not in one software, but with one provider. I mean, Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, that was super scary for attorneys because there's like, Mm -hmm. where's my data? Who Mm -hmm. owns the data? Is my data data? being protected? What's the cloud? That sounds scary, right? I think we've moved past that. I hope so, yeah. (laughs) Um, So now it's time to start leveraging the data. Yeah. So you clearly see that as a value proposition. Like, why is that important? And what does that look like in the future? Huge. I think that's, so for me, that's one of the things I'm I'm most passionate about. And it's not Mm -hmm. just data. It's like, as a lawyer who went to law school, practiced law, you know, as a litigator, I went in house and and saw what it was like in that aspect. Like they never once teach us about business management. <laughs> like there's, right. we do business law. I had to take that class, but like no one ever taught me about how to actually like put together a budget and like what does profitability really mean? Oh, I, I can't tell you how many like solo attorneys start up and at the end of the year, they're like, oh, I have to pay taxes? Yeah, yep. right. You have to pay right. taxes. Yeah, yeah, that's income. Um, and like basic spreadsheet management. Right. Like, I mean, like, right. man, I would kill. I would kill for an Excel class in a, in a law school. <laughs> like, we kind of glaze over when we see that. But then you get out in the real world, and like, that's the stuff you do. And we're all, you know, at some point, going to probably dip our toe in that pool and, and give it a try, doing our own thing. Right. No one knows what they're doing. So for me, the thing I'm most passionate about, as 
an attorney myself who went into technology, the child of two attorneys who are not, you know, who are brilliant and also not business people necessarily. They adapted, but they were not necessarily out of the box like that. I want us to be able to give attorneys real usable data in front of them. Like giving you access to reports and you still have to go and dig it out is one thing. And that's at least part of the way there. But actually presenting the data to you in a way where you can easily see profitability based off of billables versus collected amounts. What was some of the time periods and actually take those and put it together to tell you like, hey, this practice area is actually your best. This one's your best, the one you should be putting more bets on. Understanding that that same thing on a more granular level, billable attorney, you know, which office, like Mm -hmm. these things, if we had access to those as lawyers, we would make way different decisions as business people. We just, we don't have easy access to it. And frankly, I think we've been underestimated like by technology companies in the past because they Mm -hmm. didn't think that we as lawyers could handle it or would want it, but it's like, we're smart people. Yeah. We understand all these things. Like if you just tell us, if we just learn what an LTV is, like the lifetime value of a customer and how that should compare to the cost you're paying to, to obtain that customer, your CAC, lawyers actually love that stuff once they mm-hmm. they learn about it. I think so too, yeah. And more and more than they did even a couple of years ago when you're a little bit more afraid of of some of those acronyms. Right. But that example you give, which is a very simple example, like what practice area is most profitable for you? Right. Like whenever I get a consulting client that I talk to, like one of the first things I ask them is like, where do you make your money? Like, let's break down your practice mix and what is the... What is the most profitable? Just and tell me. What's the most common answer to that question? The common answer is wrong no because idea. they pick something. <laughs> no, they tell me. And then I'm like, okay, let's run a report on your system. Right. And inevitably it's like, oh, I actually don't make as much money doing that yes. as I thought. Or this practice is trending up. So yeah, exactly. database decision-making is certainly key yeah. for law firms. I, I hope lawyers start to do more I of that. I think it's critical. I think yeah. it's, and I do, I really do think it's up to, you know, technologists to make that kind of product for the users. Oh, sure. Absolutely. To show them. It's like, we only know what we don't know. And that kind of goes back to just tying it all together with one of the paradigm. One of the reasons I was so excited to join paradigm with the Headnote team is that they have the ability, unlike any other provider in legal, to actually have that data in one place. So even if you're using something that has a wheel and spoke, you might have data that's in your CRM that's integrated with your operating system. That doesn't mean your operating system is going to have access to that data to turn it into right. a usable report. Right. Or your payment integration, you know, that is managed by a third party. Like, what good is all of your like receivable and billable info if you don't actually be able to match it up with what you actually collected? It's like right. half there's of the data picture. capture issues. Mm-hmm. There's you got to put in the right fields. You got to generate the right reports. To, right. And like and stitch I, it together. I mean, who has time right. for that? Yeah, but it's doable if you've got the data in the right place and the team that's dedicated that's right. to that. That's and right. And like uh, the way I view it is like I think a lot of attorneys look at data and they're like big data. Like they've got a Facebook problem. Hey, <laughs> spoiler alert, you don't scary, have a Facebook data. problem. Right. <laughs> you, you've got a small set of data and it's just leveraging that. Yeah. One more thing I want to ask you about before yep. we finish up this segment is, so you've got some tech savvy attorneys out there who are into right. like the big shiny next thing, right? Yeah. Like these are the kind of folks where like new iPhone comes out, you would line up at the Apple store, or at least you used to. Mm -hmm. These are the attorneys asking all the time about if you have a Zapier connection and the other attorneys are like, what is Zapier? Yes, those (laughs) ones. Yes. Right. Do you have a Zapier integration? So in terms of, uh, in terms of those attorneys, like I think one of the, it's like if you're telling me and I'm that attorney and it's like, I get everything in one place. Now I got serious FOMO, right? I'm like, right. but what if there's this great software product that comes out and I can't use it now? What do you say to people who would have that objection to like this whole concept of an operating system? I would say, show me exactly what that is. And that is going to be front and center on the roadmap if we don't already offer it. You know, again, part of it for us was like- Good answer. Bringing that stuff in-house gives us so much more control, right? So again, it's like, if you are using one of those third parties or or a provider that it's third party, you know, integrations, and you say like, God, I really wish that I could get, you know, this feature. Like, oh, I really wish I could get, you know, more reporting or the, you know, surcharge or something like that on my payments. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to my provider and tell them I want that. And they're going to say, well, you should go to your, go to the third party integration partner and tell them you want that. You're now going to them and like, they're not going to, there's no reason for them to prioritize all of those individual requests. For us, by yeah. bringing these things in house, we can actually say, 
across our platforms, we're hearing that these are the biggest things that people need and want. And we can rearrange our roadmap to make that happen or decide how to prioritize based on user feedback. And you're not going to get that ability to actually influence some of those features with stitching together a system with all kinds of, of providers. Right. Like it's sort of the data question writ large, right? If like lawyers can make decisions because they have more data to access, so can the company that has more data to access. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Hey, this was a good talk. Sarah is coming back. This is Sarah Schaff of Paradigm, who's our guest today. We'll take one final sponsor break before we do that so you can hear more about what our sponsors can do for your law practice. Then stay tuned for the rump roast. It's even more supple than the roast beast. Now more than ever, an effective marketing strategy is one of the most important things your law firm can have, and Scorpion can help. With nearly 20 years of experience serving the legal industry, Scorpion has proven methods to help you get the high value cases you deserve. Join thousands of attorneys across the country who have turned to Scorpion for effective marketing and technology solutions. For a better way to grow your practice, visit scorpionlegal.com. Welcome back everyone to the rear end of the legal toolkit the rump roast it's a grab bag of short form topics of my choosing sarah we're gonna get a little cray today are you ready i'm born ready worse than crazy okay so as you may know as you referenced there's currently a pandemic ongoing have you heard about this i've heard i've heard something about it fun times good times mm -hmm, mm -hmm. americans everywhere sitting at home eating sleeves of oreos drinking mm -hmm. heavily so mm -hmm. i want to ask you because I feel like you would have a good answer for this. What is your favorite pandemic cocktail? Do you have one? Man, okay, so I've, I've, of course I do. Um, oh, yes, I, I thought yeah, so, which is why I'm asking. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, what I got really into, especially over the summer, because I live in California where it can get really warm, <laughs> this is good all year round, is something, I, was, I won't lie, I was drinking more than usual. I <laughs> decided- Sorry, I should, you're in a safe space right yeah, now. Yeah, to figure out how to maybe in, ingest less calories, but still be able to drink <laughs> as much. Right, so right. I, ma I made something uh, probably other people have too called Sarah's Sparkling Margarita. And oh, wait, you've named it after yourself? Yeah, Amazing. Okay. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I mean, who else? And so it is a, if you can, a higher end brand of tequila because you want to taste it mm -hmm. and do a few fingers, you know, full glass of ice few fingers of good tequila and then fresh lime juice and agave, like squeeze that in there or pro tip, just get the margarita mix and <laughs> pour that in there. Like yes. the, one of the kinds that doesn't have high fructose corn syrup. I love the faster. detail you're going into here. This is I, what I'm I was hoping would happen. Myself yes. do it in my head. And then yes. you take a sparkling beverage and you do about a third or two thirds of it that. Mm -hmm. So like I got really into the coconut LaCroix. Oh yeah. And it was like that a Coco good. Rita. Uh, mm -hmm. It kind of tastes like if you got sunscreen in your margarita on vacation, which it turns out is really good. Oh, really? Because mm -hmm. I would think that would sound nasty. No, but it's actually it's really good. good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good. So you basically do a lot of tequila, a little bit of the agave limer mix, and then like a lot of the sparkling water, flavored sparkling water, and you have a really delicious beverage that is actually not too bad for you. That sounds really good. And what did you call that again? I called it, if you use the coconut, I called it a Coco Rita. But if you okay. just do a regular, it's just Sarah's Sparkling Margarita. Sarah's Sparkling Margarita. I think we're going to put that recipe into the show notes. So Great. Everybody across it. the country will now be drinking Everyone needs Sarah's this, Sparkling Margarita. Everyone I'm telling you. So I got a special treat for you. Okay. We're going to do a two-part rump roast okay. today. I'm launching a new segment with you mm -hmm. because I feel like you can handle it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm calling this segment cock and bull stories. Okay. Here's how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a story and your job is to identify whether I'm making it up or if it's a real story about my family. Okay. Are you ready? I was born ready, Jared. Let's yes. Go. Yeah. Okay. So note that I have changed the names to protect the sort of innocent. Story mm -hmm. number one, you can tell me if this is true or false. My great, great uncle, Rembert, lived in the woods outside of town in the 1930s. When his niece was going to get married, the rest of my family dragged him out of the woods, put him in a bucket, and gave him a bath so he could get ready for the wedding. He hadn't had a bath in so long that afterwards his fingernails and toenails all fell off. Is that a true story about my family, or am I making it up? Did you say great or great-great? 
Great, great. Um, incorrect. Not true. It's true. That's a true Dang story it. about okay. my family. So wait, the nails fell out? They fell off. Yeah. <laughs> he hadn't taken a bath in like oh a long time. They get better from here. And we're oh, only like okay. I'm not I'm not starting out with the craziest stories. Okay, here oh, we go. Oh, okay, great. Which may or may not be true. I also I also am very creative. Story number mm-hmm. two. Are you ready for story number two? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My grandfather, who we'll call a bed and a go, created a makeshift zoo in his backyard. So he was kind of like the Tiger King before there was a Tiger King. Mm-hmm. And he once captured a lynx, which if you don't know, is a medium-sized woodland wild cat. Terrifying. Lives in the Northeast, yes. Mm-hmm. And so he kept it in a cage next to his peacocks. Is that a true story or am I making it up? God, I feel like it's true. It is true. Oh yes. my God. How does one <laughs> catch a lynx? Like- Without getting totally one's, injured. One's grandson does not ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> grandson just walks very quietly through Special the backyard. kind yes. of person who sees right. a lynx and says, I'm going to catch that thing. <laughs> My <laughs> grandfather was insane. I like, would run as we, fast as I could. We had the health inspectors at the house a lot. <laughs> A lot. I'm sure, as I'm sure you did. It's not good. There are many fines that were passed. A lot of saying, probably a lot of violations. Yeah, just yeah. thinking oh, about all yeah. of that lynx it's not, poop, you know? It's not every day that people are like, oh, hey, I got a lynx in the backyard. <laughs> did he charge people to come and no, see it? No, like, it was, was free. There, it was well, free. We could work on that. I think we he could was, probably he, turn to a profit on that. He was a kind-hearted psychopath. Oh, anyway, that's sweet. <laughs> story, story, story number three. Are you prepared for story number three? No, no, I'm not. But let's do it anyway. All right. We're going to have to determine whether it's true or false. Okay. My father, brother, and I were at a family reunion, three of us. Okay. Went up to the second floor bar to play pool. Where was the family reunion? In the story, let's say it's in Massachusetts. Okay. So... As we're getting cues and sticks and about to rack the balls, the bartender says, you might not want to play on that pool table. I had sex with your great aunt on it last night. Oh, True or false? Okay. Um, gosh, I'm going to say false because you hesitated on where it was. Yes. But also, is it a riddle and the bartender's really your great uncle? <laughs> <laughs> All good questions. That story is actually true. Oh, my God. And no, the bartender was not my great uncle. But oh my God. Did you get the backstory? Like what? It was the... maybe the grossest moment of my life. And I really yeah. didn't want the backstory. Cause let That's so this is not like my great aunt was probably like 75 at that point. Oh. And still getting some. So look, my like, congrats God. to her. But like, I will tell you, That's we definitely moved to the next pool table. Yeah. I would say so and then probably you know burned that memory as far from your as far as you could out of your brain right is, right i a, like that is a hard one i moved to the next pool table finished our game lit myself on fire went on right, with my business exactly yeah went so. and just put chemicals into my eyeballs and just yes. went on with my day yeah and so the moral of the story is that all of those events actually happened in my wow. family wow so just to display wow. how crazy my family is northeastern that is hillbillies a treasure trove Th- this is this is only scraping the surface. I would imagine this is like the hard part on top of the creme brulee. There's You're so not much even more. Thinking of the things that you actually tried to forget, you know. Yeah, like yeah. The, this those is are, like so, some, some of those memories there. are just suppressed. Yeah, exactly. So. Just wait till those come out. So I think this is a good stopping point. I think I should stop now. Mm-hmm. Sarah, thank you for being on the show. It You're amazing. My You're you're a great honor. sport. As always, Jared. People have a cocktail. They got to learn a little bit about the career family history. Before we go, can you tell everybody again who you are, what you do, and how they can reach out to Paradigm if they would like? Absolutely. I am Sarah Schaff. I am the general manager of the payments division for Paradigm. We are revolutionizing payments and financial services for the entire legal industry. And we are the home to practice Panther, Bill for Time, Maris Case, and Headnote. And you can learn more about us at joinparadigm.com. All right, everybody. Go to joinparadigm.com. Check it out. And that'll do it for another episode of the Legal Toolkit Podcast, where we work 60% of the time, every time. Wake me up with your love and touch. you got the kindness caress. Wake me up with the morning 